Welcome to part 11 of my Blender for Complete Beginners tutorial series. If you haven't seen the tutorial playlist, then definitely check that out with the link in the description. So in this part, we're gonna be creating some more advanced procedural materials. And specifically, we'll be creating a procedural material to add a cool texture to the carrot. And also we're gonna be adding a cool procedural icy snow material to the snowballs of the snowman. Now, if you like using procedural materials in your projects, then you may be interested in checking Checking out my ultimate blender procedural material pack which comes with all of my procedural materials and they're all pre-set up for blenders asset browser and they all have custom thumbnails and they're sorted into catalogs and each material comes with a customizable node group so once you set up the ultimate procedural material pack in blenders asset browser you can just drag and drop the assets into your 3d projects to add materials to your 3d scenes you can also check out my procedural material packs which are packs of 10 materials Materials, and you can also purchase all of my procedural materials individually on my Gumroad store. And if you'd like to learn how to create procedural materials, then definitely check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist where I show you how to create all of my procedural materials. So let's now start by creating a procedural material for the carrot nose. So I'll select the carrot nose and let's go over here to the shading workspace. So earlier in the tutorial series, I did edit my workspace a little bit. So I put the 3D viewport right over here and then I put the shader editor right over here because I just like the look of that a bit better. I'm also going to hold down the Z button and then move my mouse up to go into the rendered view and I'm just going to zoom in here to the carrot and I want to see this in the rendered view um, and I just want to preview that carrot. So now let's create a cool procedural material to add a texture to the carrot. So I'm going to start by pressing shift A for the add menu. I will go here to the search and I'm going to search for a noise texture and let's drop the noise texture down here. Now, earlier in the tutorial series, I showed you how to turn on the Node Wrangler add-on, but if you don't have the Node Wrangler enabled, let me just show you how to enable it. So I can click here on Edit, and I can go here to the Preferences, and in Blender's user preferences, I can click here on add-ons. And the Node Wrangler add-on is built into Blender, so you don't have to download or install the add-on, you can just enable it. So here on the search, you can start to type Node, and you can enable the Node Wrangler add-on, and this is a really useful add-on when you're using the procedural nodes, and I'll show you how to use it in the video. And then you can click on Save Preferences to the Node Wrangler add-on is enabled in all of your projects. So let's close the user preferences. So the main feature of the Node Wrangler add-on is to quickly preview different nodes. So when you're working with the nodes, especially the procedural nodes and the procedural materials, it's really useful to preview each node to see what it's doing. So how you use the Node Wrangler add-on is you hold down the control and shift key at the same time, and then you can select different nodes. And you can see that it's going to add this wire directly up to that node, and you can click on different nodes to preview them. So just to show you, I'll add like another node here, make it blue. So you can see as I control shift and then select the different nodes, it'll plug the wire up to it and so I can preview what each node is looking like. So I will control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. Now if I look here at the noise texture you can see it looks a little bit stretched. It's a bit stretched on the carrot. So I'm going to use another feature of the node wrangler. If I select the noise texture with the noise texture selected I can press control T. So control T is going to bring up the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Now the texture coordinate is going to give us some options for how we want to place the texture on the object. And I want to use the object coordinates. Now the object coordinates is a nice way to place the procedural textures on the object more evenly. So if I put the object into the vector, you can see now we actually can't see the noise texture, but to fix that, I'll just drag the scale value up. And now you can see the noise texture doesn't look stretched. Whereas before, when we just had it set to generated or UV, you can see it looks a little bit stretched. But if I use the object coordinates, it'll place that noise texture more evenly so it doesn't look stretched. And then the mapping node is just used to change the location, rotation, scale. We'll leave that there, but we're not really going to change it. So now let's change some of the noise texture settings. So here on this scale, I'm going to turn this up to like a 35. I think that is a good size. And I also want it to be very detailed, so I'll drag the detail all the way over till it stops at the maximum of 15. Now there is something that I want to do with this mapping, and that is that I'm going to change the scale so that it looks like we're having those little cracks which are on a carrot. Because if you look at a carrot texture, there are usually these little cracks which are going around the carrot. 
So what I'm going to do is take this Z value and I will drag it and I will squish it down. And you can see that is looking more like a carrot texture. So I'll turn the Z value to six on the scale and now it looks a bit more like a carrot texture. So now I can take this noise texture and I can put the factor value, which is this gray dot, I can put it here into the base color. And then I can hold down the control and shift key and select the principal shader to preview that. Now the problem with this is that it is white and black, so I want to change those colors. So a really great node to change the colors of a texture is called a color ramp. So if I press shift A for the add menu, we can just immediately start to search for color. And you can see here it is converter color ramp. Let's click on the color ramp, and then remember if you drag the node over a wire, it'll turn white, and you can drop it there, and it'll put it into the connection. Now the color ramp has these two tabs, and if you drag the tabs closer to each other, they'll be more contrasty. So if I drag the black tab over, everything's more dark, or if I drag the white tab over, everything is more white. So I'm going to drag this black tab to maybe about here, and then the white tab I'll drag to maybe about there. So now I can change the colors by clicking on the tab and then clicking on this little color slot. And this will bring up a color wheel. So I want to make this first color kind of like the orangey color for the carrot. So let's make it like a strong orangey color. And then this color here, if I click on the black tab, this one I'm going to make it a little bit brighter. And then I'm going to make it kind of orange so it's kind of like a brown color. So something like that is pretty good. So we now have a cool procedural carrot texture. Now I also want to make the carrot look a little bit bumpy. So we can take this factor value and we can put it here into the normal. Although remember, as I talked about earlier in the tutorial series, we need this gray dot to be converted to bump data before it goes into the normal. So I can click and drag right here and then I can let go and then I can start to type in bump. And we can choose the bump node and we actually can choose the bump height. So let's click on this and then we can drop it here. So you can see now the factor is going into the height. So just add a bump node and make sure the factor is going into the height. So the bump node will convert the black and white data into normal data. So it goes in as the gray dot and it comes out as a purple dot. And then that height can go into the normal. So now you can see that the carrot looks really bumpy. Now that is a bit too strong, so I'm going to drag the strength value down, and I will type in like 0.2 for the strength, so now you can see the carrot looks slightly bumpy. And then I might also turn this roughness value up, so I might type in like a 0.6 on the roughness, so it's a little bit more rough. Now just one more thing that I want to do to make the carrot material look a little bit more soft is I want to add a little bit of subsurface scattering. And subsurface scattering is allowing light to go through the object. So some food objects and also like skin does have some subsurface scattering and subsurface scattering allows light to go through the object. So let's open up this subsurface tab here on the principal shader, and this is the subsurface settings. So on the weight here, I will just type in like 0.3 to turn it up a little bit. You can see if I turn the weight up a little bit more, it's gonna allow kind of some light to go through. I'll just turn it to like a 0.3. So it is very subtle, you can't see it too much in this scene, uh, but it is gonna allow a little bit of light to go through the object, and so it'll make it look a little bit more soft. And that is going to be it for the procedural carrot material. Let's press Control S to save, and then then let's just select one of these objects here of the snow and let's add a procedural snow material. So this one is going to be a little bit more complex. So to create the icy snow texture, I will press shift A and let's go here to the search and I can search for a really cool texture. It's called a Voronoi texture. So let's drop the Voronoi here. I also want to press control T to add that texture coordinate and mapping. And I want to control shift and select the Voronoi so I can actually see what it's looking like. So you can see the Voronoi texture has all of these little dots. And I also want to use the object coordinates, so let's put the object here into the vector, and again, the object coordinates will place the texture on the object more evenly. So now I can change some of the settings. So to make it look more icy, let's click on this setting here, and I can change it to the Chebyshev. And the Chebyshev is going to add like some little sharp parts, and so it makes it look a bit more icy and like snow. And then also let's change the scale. So I'm going to type in like 400 on the scale and that's going to make it much smaller. So if I zoom in, you can see it's going to be a bit icy and it's going to kind of have these little sharp textures. And then also let's turn the detail all the way up to the max of 15. So if I zoom in, you can really see now all that detail is making it look much better. So that's what we're going to use as the main texture for the icy snow. So now I want to put this Voronoi texture distance into the base color. And then I can control shift and select the principled shader to preview 
preview it. Now I want to change the colors because right now it's just white and gray. So you could add a color ramp, but what I'm going to add instead is a mix color node. So if I press shift A for the add menu, I can search for mix color and let's choose the mix color node. And again, you can just click right here and drop it there on the wire and it will add it up. Now the mix color node is a little bit different than the color ramp. The mix color is going to have one color, which is A, another color, which is B, and then a factor. Now this factor is determining how much of A and how much it's B it's going to be. So let me just unplug this so you can see what it's doing. So for A, let's just make this a very strong blue color, and then for B, let's make this a very strong red color. So this factor is going to blend between color A and color B, so it's going to tell it how much it's using. So if I turn the factor up to 1, it's only using color B, so it looks red. If I drag the factor down to 0, it's only using color A, which is the blue color. So again, this blends between the two colors. However, instead of using one single value to blend between them, I could plug a texture up to the factor. And if I plug a texture up to the factor, then the light and dark values of the texture are going to determine where on the texture it's going to be A and where on the texture it's going to be B. So I could plug the distance up to the factor, so now the lighter and darker parts of the texture are determining where it's going to be A and B. So you can see now it's basically these blue little dots with red. So now I can change the colors. So for color B, I'm going to click here on RGB, and I will first drag these all the way up so it's white and make sure this is fully white. Then here on color A, this is also going to be pretty bright, so we're going to make it fully white. And then I'm going to make this a very, very slight blue color so it kind of looks like icy snow. And there we go. So there is going to be the texture for the icy snow. And so that is looking much better for the base color. Now I also want to add a little bit of surface bump so I can go to the add menu. And again, we can search for that same bump node. And let's drop this bump node down here. And then let's take this Voronoi distance and we are going to put that into the height value again. And then this normal can go into the normal. So now you can see it looks really bumpy, but that is way too strong. So let's take the strength. We can turn it way down to like a 0.1, so it's very subtle, but it's just going to add a little bit of surface bump. You can kind of see it better there in the shadows. Now, I want to add a bit more noise over the entire snow, so I can actually add a noise texture and add it into the bump. So if we go to the Add menu, we can search for a noise texture. Let's drop the noise texture down here, and then we can actually use the same texture coordinate and mapping. So let's plug this vector up to the vector the noise texture, and again, that way it'll use the object coordinates, so it'll place the noise texture on the object more evenly. Let's control shift and select the noise texture so I can see what it's doing. And I want to change some, a few of the settings. So I'm going to turn the scale to like 250 so that it is smaller. And then let's drag the detail all the way to the max of 15. So drag it all the way over. And then adding the roughness, turning up the roughness is going to add a bit more detail. So I'm going to type in a roughness value of 0.65. So there's even more roughness and that adds a bit more detail. Now, what if we want to plug this noise texture into the bump? Well, we can actually add multiple bump maps. So if I click on the bump map, I can press Shift D to duplicate it, and we can drop it after the first one. Now, because the first bump map is already converting it to bump data, this is already coming out as a purple dot. So I can plug this normal into that normal of the bump. So now the normal is going into the normal, so now we have another height value here that we can plug data into to convert it. So let's put this noise texture factor into the height of that bump, and then let me just control shift and select the principal shader to preview the material, and let's drag this back here. So this way we can mix multiple bump maps together. And if you want to preview what it's doing, you can control shift and select the first bump. You can kind of see what that's doing there. And then you can control shift and select the second bump. And if I turn up the strength, you can see what it's doing. So there's the first one. And then there's the second one. Now on the second one, I want to turn this up a little bit more. So I'm going to type in 0.2 on the strength. So now you can see what the surface bump is doing. And I can control shift and select the principal shader. So now you can see it's just adding a little bit more bump and roughness over the entire material. Now, as well as that, I want to add a little bit of subsurface scattering just to allow, allow a little bit of light to go through the shader. So let's open up the subsurface here, and this one on the weight here, I can turn this up to like a 0.5, so it's going to allow a little bit of light to go through. So you can see now that snow just looks a little bit more soft and it looks a bit more like snow.
And that is it for the procedural snow material. Now another cool thing you could do is you could click on the hat and we can go to this hat material and the hat has two materials so if for some reason you're seeing the wrong material you can click here on the material properties and then you can click on the correct material. So let's click on the hat black. And if I zoom way into the snowflake, what if I want to make a little bit of bump to the edge to kind of pop out that snowflake? Well, what I could do is add another bump node, just like we did before. So go to the search and search for another bump node. Let's drop this down here. And then what I could do is I could put this alpha into the height. So if I control shift and select the snowflake, you can see there's the texture. But if I control shift and select it again, the alpha is just going to be black and white because this is a PNG image and the PNG image had an alpha transparency. So let's now control shift and select on the bump node to preview it. So if the alpha is going into the height, you can see now it's adding this tiny little bump to the edges and that actually looks really cool. So we could now put the normal into the normal of the principal shader and then again hold down the control and shift key and select the principal shader to preview it. So now if I zoom really close, there's kind of a little bit of reflection and it kind of looks like that texture is just bumping out. And that looks pretty cool. And you can change the strengths. You could turn this down or turn it up, but I'll just leave it at a one so that it is quite bumpy. Now why I'm not using the color, let me just show you what this does. If I put the color into the height, you can see it looks really weird. It has kind of all these lines and it looks just really nasty. And that is because of the color gradient of the texture. So if I control shift and select like this you can see it's kind of like this blue color in the center but then as it goes out it gets lighter and so that's why it's adding that weird color gradient there so it looks kind of rough and weird if you like it you could leave that how it is but i'm instead going to use the alpha so i'll just plug the alpha into the height such so as another cool little detail. All right, so I will press Control S to save, and this was a pretty quick part, but this is going to wrap it up for this part of the tutorial. So I hope you're easily able to follow along. I hope this gave you a better idea of the procedural nodes, and thank you again for watching. And if you like using procedural materials in your projects, then definitely check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack, which has all of my procedural materials pre-set up for Blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. You can also purchase all of my materials individually on my Gumroad store, and you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist to learn how to create many more procedural materials. And I also have an introduction to procedural shader nodes in Blender. If you'd like to check out that video, that video goes even more in depth on the basics of procedural nodes and procedural shader nodes, so you can also check out that video with the link in the description. So in the next part of this tutorial series, I'm going to introduce you to particle systems, and we're going to use particle systems to to add a little bit of fuzz to the scarf and make the scarf look a little bit fuzzy. So when the next part is released, it's going to be right up there on the end screen, and also the link will be in the description when it's released. So I hope you're enjoying this tutorial series, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.